Well, it starts in a lot of different ways with us for uh, producing tracks. Literally, we might have done something live, experimented, just, it just kind of felt good. We might try to kind of recreate a rendition of it in the studio. Or one of our brothers is actually five writers as well for Octave One. Uh, we're just two, the two guys that actually like to go out and perform live. But they might come up with something, a bass line, a drum riff, or any of us might do the same. And then we just kind of pass it around. What do you think? Can you, you hear something you want to add on to it? Or is it right the way it is? Or a lot of times we're subtracting things off of tracks lately because we put so many ideas on them. So we're pulling things off, changing sounds, editing vibes a bit, you know. So, uh, you know, that's, it, it, it starts in numerous, numerous ways. There is no set way to start the whole thing, you know. The way I start to make my tracks is, is very different, of course, I mean, um, I'm an electronic music producer and of course kick and claps are the classic. Like I said before, um, I use a lot of um, analog sounds for the drums. It's really the band, but it's very basic. So for me it's like, of course, first the kick, clap, and then I try to find like a melodic sound, like a melody. It could be from like a synth, could be like also like from instrumentals. So it's, it's really depend of the music and of the vibe and which direction is going to be. When I start uh, working on a new track, uh, it can be, yeah, the approach can be different. It can be, it can start from a mood. So something that, uh, that I feel that I want to translate into sound. And um, that can happen with astral projection. That happened with astral projection, for example. Uh, so I, I was just in need of a uh, hypnotic synth line and that's what I did. Uh, some, and sometimes it can also happen while uh, this floating around the synthesizer. So you tweak out, uh, you are exploring and you immediately find uh, out yourself sound designing and following uh, a certain thing that you feel you have to follow and you'd end up with a new idea. That's most of the times how it happens. So what I like to do in the studio as a first thing, if I'm starting off, is uh, I have a few like presets that I use that I know that sound good right away. Um, so I have a few kick drums that I use a lot, depending on the key of the song. Uh, if I place those kick drums, I know it sounds good immediately, or I have like a reference. So that I do a lot, and then I pick a, a grand piano, which is uh, the one of Logic, the most easy one ever, uh, and I play the melody with that. And then I have an instrument that's called the Serum, and it has a few uh, presets. And if, if it sounds cool in the Serum, I, I, you know, if I have a good melody, if a good riff or uh, cool chords after that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for the right instruments. So um, a great way of doing it also is by opening native instruments and, and, and going through the libraries they have, because they have really interesting um, almost, I want to say, organic, but very dynamic instruments. And I think that also uh, inspires you to uh, use like different instruments, yeah. When I start a track, it's always different. I think I base it off how I work out, like with my inspiration. Like for example, if today I get inspired, right? Or if I'm walking past a coffee shop and I hear some music that I like, that might inspire me. And then I'll have my hotel room and I'll go back and jot an idea down and I'll start maybe with like, a melody because I got hooked on a melody or if I want to make something a little bit rougher sometimes to start with a kick. I don't think when I go into making a record I ever start the same way always. I always just start with something whether it's a kick or a melody it's always random. I kind of just go with the flow. Whatever inspires me whether it's a melody, drums or just kind of wing it honestly. Well we always put a kick, kick drum on first. Yeah, the kick. Yeah. So, you know, the kick influences everything in techno. It's very much the core of where that track gets its soul from. You know, that is the root of all evil when it comes out as techno. So there's a kick and then you move on from that. No, and if it's a good sounding kick, then everything else follows. Exactly. That's if it's a crap idea. sounding kick, then it's gonna, everything else is gonna sound crap. So we, that's in our, in our, without. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what we do is we make folders of our own kicks. So, well, it's our own sample yeah, pack. Yeah, we have our own sample pack, which we don't give away. And you, you go through it and you're like, oh, that's the kind of kick I'm looking for. Then you put that into the arrangement. You start you, the track. You've already got a sonic 
uh, reference, if you like, of how much subs it should be already. You know, so you work the bass off that. It makes it a lot easier to mix the track. And then you tweak the kick. Once you've got the track and exactly. the bass, then you retweak that kick again. You know? Exactly. Change the tone it. or, you know. A little trick. This is something naughty for beginner producers or, you know. Steal what it. We used to do is what we, you, we used to. Oh. That, like now we have our own kicks. Yeah. And, and with time we've made our own sample pack. But before that we used to nick. Yeah. We used to sample kicks from a master track. Yeah, because that it would already give you the sets reference. That, that already sets that precedent, you know? Yeah. So, you know, steal it. <laughs> Sample it. Sample it. Sample it sounds better than steal it. Yeah, okay. Sample it. Sample it. No. It's so... Sample it. Oh, dude, that's a great vocal. Sample it. Sample it. Sample it. Sample it. Sample it. Sample it.